Mikey Howard, um, an associate minister here at First Missionary Baptist Church in Moundville. First of all, thank you for joining us on Facebook uh, or liking us on Facebook and joining us on our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for being mindful. I know there are many things you could be doing this afternoon, but thankful that you're here with us. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to look at our Sunday school lesson for this quarter. This is the second lesson now, summer quarter. Um, our first lesson was a call for, of wisdom. And in that, that lesson, um, we'll look at a little recap of what we did there. But before we get started, let's just start with a word of prayer. Lord, please give us the grace to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, knowing that all other things that we need will eventually be added. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, wisdom. The many faces of wisdom. Uh, the quarter of study will, will explore how God is experienced as wisdom in both the Hebrew scripture and in the New Testament. During this quarter, we will explore the many facets of wisdom as recorded in the book of Proverbs and in the gospel and in the letter written by James. Um, I uh, would like for you to get your commentaries ready, your Sunday school books ready, your Bibles ready as we uh, delve into this book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs the second chapter, uh, verses one through 11. Um, Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs one from last week, we learned that uh, verse seven, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction is considered the motto for the entire collection and firmly connects human wisdom and knowledge to service of God. A little Bible background for our lesson. Uh, Proverbs 2 has its background in a culture, a Jewish culture. Um, it's sort of a Jewish belief system that saw knowledge as uh, that knowledge was something that came from God. The Israelites had a tradition of seeking God's face in everything and in anything. The value of wisdom, our lesson for this week, um, has many perks, many advantages to it. Uh, the value of wisdom um, one of the perks is that it's work for the good of all. Another is live together in harmony. And in this day and age, that's something that we should strive to do. Wisdom is walking together. Wisdom, um, as you remember, Joseph resists temptation and walk on just and good path. Wisdom, following godly wisdom, pays off. Our unifying lesson principle for this afternoon. People, uh, we feel compelled by something greater than ourselves to act wisely when confronting feelings of inadequacies to complete a task. In last week's lesson, The Call of Wisdom, there were some lesson principles some, some things that we needed to have pulled from that lesson. Uh, and I just would like to remind you of three of them. Uh, one was recognize the value of godly wisdom for discerning the direction in which one should go. And we should value godly wisdom in the choices that we make. 
And the third one was make a conscious effort to apply the standards of wisdom to a specific choice that needs to be made. And in this week's lesson titled, The Value of Wisdom and the Gifts She Offers. We are living in some life-threatening situations because of the current political climate, the current political issues regarding the executive, the judicial, and the congressional branches of our government. Wisdom is essential in navigating our current political landscape. Proverbs 2, uh, 11, it is generally accepted that King Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. Uh, Solomon was a wise king who was known to have more than 3,000 3, proverbs and saying. There were also others who contributed to the book of Proverbs. Solomon was such a wise king. Um, it was a question, how did God respond when Solomon asked for wisdom? God asked Solomon, um, what, what, what do you want? And of all the things Solomon could ask for, Solomon asks for wisdom. It says in 1 Kings verse 3, Solomon is described in following positive term. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father. One night the Lord appeared to Solomon and said, ask what I should give you. Um, in response, Solomon answered, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? This passage notes it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked God. And when we do things that are pleasing to the Lord, uh, God delights to give wisdom to those who truly seek him. Our unifying lesson principle for the lesson this week, we search for life meanings through wealth, wisdom, and other worldly things. What is the best method to use to search for meaning in life? What is the best method to search for meaning in life? Wisdom's treasure is more valuable than riches because it can center a person's heart and will and thoughts towards the knowledge of God. And until a person's heart is changed, nothing will. The objective of this week's lesson is to understand that the search for the wisdom that comes from God is more important than striving for wealth or any other temporal gains. Yearn for the wisdom that comes from God and to make a consistent effort to send our hearts, our will, and our thoughts in the wisdom that comes from God. So before we go any further, let's read our lesson for this afternoon. Uh, Proverbs 2, starting with verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure. Verse 5, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes, with, comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. 
then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. Verse 10, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discern will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. What does it mean to turn one's ear to wisdom and to apply one's heart to understanding? It means taking the time to listen to truth that comes from a tired and trusted source. The first step is to listen. The first step is to listen. When we speak, we can only share what we supposedly already know. But when we listen, there is at least a possibility that we may learn something new. Wisdom is often personified in the Proverbs and is presented in the feminine gender as a relationship to be desired. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Get understanding. Forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Anything that is of significant value requires a commitment of time and energy in order to obtain. Surface knowledge is common and readily available. But godly wisdom is below the surface. Godly wisdom is beneath the surface, and it must be pursued with a great purpose and intentionality in order to be realized. Yet another picture is offered here for the reward for living a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Book of Psalms, 119. Number of Psalms, the 11th verse, records what happened when wisdom enters the heart. It says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Our use and discretion can help to preserve us and to keep us from life, various traps and distractions. And there are plenty of traps and distractions that are in our world that's begging, pleading for our attention. Discretion is defined as the quality of having or showing discernment of good judgment. This involves, but is not limited to caution and reserve in speech, and the ability to make responsible decisions. Understanding applying these characteristics can be extremely helpful in business settings, in social settings, in family life, in our world today. Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding. Based on knowledge and understanding. Knowledge as to be aware of something. Understanding as having to exercise to discern both good and evil or trust and error. What is necessary to make good decisions? Of choices today. What is necessary? What, 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 what does it take to make good decisions or choices today? Consider what is needed to make, to avoid making bad decisions. We need to think about the following actions we take in search of wisdom. Accept God's word. We need to accept God's word. Store up God's commands within. Turn our ear to wisdom. Apply our hearts to understanding. Look for wisdom as silver. 
Search, search diligently for wisdom as hidden treasures. Refer to Proverbs 2, verse 8 and 13. Compare the course of the just with a walk in dark ways. Compare the course of the just. Verse 8, he guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. When we are just, he'll guard the path of justice and preserve the way. He keeps us. He keeps us. Versus when we walk in darkness, verse 13, from those who leave the path of unrighteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. For those who leave the path of unrighteousness to walk in the path of darkness. Look at the process of gaining wisdom through a consistent process of growth that includes. <clears throat> and we as believers, we as followers, we as Christians, we as followers of Christ during this process of sanctification, during this process of growth, as we grow, it's a process. Wisdom, it gives us some things. Trusting and honoring God. Realizing that the Bible reveals wisdom to us. Making a lifelong series of right choices. When we make choices, learning from our errors and recovering, we will do better. We as saints, we as believers, we need to stay steadfast with the Lord. And wisdom is one of the virtues that we need to stay steadfast close to. As we conclude our lesson for this evening, and I strongly encourage you to keep up with your lessons for this summer quarter. Um, there are some types of clothing that can be worn during certain seasons of the year. However, there are other types of clothing that are considered all season and can be worn year round. Wisdom is one of those all season types of garments that can and should be worn all throughout the year. The type of wisdom that we need for a living comes only from God. An ounce of wisdom is worth more than a pound of wealth nor fame. One need not grow old in order to appreciate and utilize the power of wisdom in life. Our, ne our lesson for next week is the gifts of wisdom. Wisdom and justice from the pathway of a righteous life. And it's taken from Proverbs, the 8th chapter, verses 8 through 14, verses 17 through 21. I strongly encourage you to read your lesson for next week and as we delve into the lesson, uh, we pray for that we will be more understanding of what God intends for us to be and the way that he wants us to live. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the gift of wisdom. May this powerful trait permeate our thoughts, our speech, and our actions. For as long as we live, God has extended to us an open invitation to go to him in prayer. And he has promised that when we knock, the door will be open. But we must preserve in our prayer. We are to keep knocking we are to pray daily and throughout each day. 
And when answers are slow to come, we are to continue lying our heartfelt requests before him. He has promised to provide wisdom and directions when we seek his good and perfect will for us and for our nations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.